Tobias is on the Purism design team. He's been contributing at GNOME for more than a year. And today he's going to tackle GNOME apps on mobile platforms. Please welcome Tobias Bernard. Thanks. All right. Um, so yeah, uh, he already said most of the things about me. Like I'm on the GNOME design team. I work at Purism since March. Um, and my main sort of role there is to basically make GNOME work on mobile and uh, essentially do it in a way that's upstream friendly, that um, works with the community and that pushes GNOME forward rather than like being a separate thing. Um, so we are very much interested in working with everyone in the community on all of this stuff. Um, and so I'm, I'm primarily going to focus on the app side because that's kind of what's going to be most relevant, but there's going to be some other stuff too. Um, so as some of you may have heard, at some point next year there's going to be a phone uh, called the Librem 5. It has an ARM processor, a 5.5 inch display, um, 720 times 1440 pixel resolution running at 2x, so that gives you like 360 times 7 something in like real resolution. Um, and it runs GNOME. And you may ask, it runs a GNOME, but GNOME does not run on phones, does it? Um, not quite yet, but we're working on it, and it's, it's closer than you may think. Um, so a little bit about like the stack uh, situation there. So um, Purism on, like, so Purism also sells laptops right now. And on the laptop, sort of, there's a distribution called PureOS that we use um, that's Debian-based, and it uses the default GNOME stack just Imagine the, the most stock GNOME experience you can get on like a rolling Debian base. On the phone, it's going to be very similar, but like a couple of small things are going to have to change. So all of this bottom stuff remains the same. Um, the shell is not GNOME shell, um, but a new custom shell that's currently being worked on by Guido, who is here. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely talk to him. Um, for various reasons, um, like basically, it would be more work to adapt the current GNOME shell to work well on the phone um, in the time frame that we have than it is to get the basics like working in a new shell. So that's kind of the rationale for that. Um, but like longer term, we definitely, I mean, on the design side, we're already working sort of like towards a similar vision as upstream. And on the development side, whatever the code base is going to be for some future GNOME shell, we would definitely also like it to be the same as on the phone. But that's just like kind of a short-term thing. Um, and on the app side, we want stock standard GNOME apps, you know, GNOME To Do and GNOME Calendar, all those things, to run on the phone just like they do on the desktop. But obviously, the interface will have to change a bit. And so that's where all the adaptive stuff comes in. That probably you you saw Adrian's talk the other day, um, and you've probably heard people kind of talk about. So basically, what we want to do is take regular GNOME apps and make them upstream in the sort of standard GNOME version work in a way that also works on the phone. And that's basically what most of this talk is going to be about. So on the shell side, I'm not going to go into too much detail because that's kind of like a bit further away, at least the most interesting stuff. Um, but basically what we want to do for the phone launch is a really sort of minimum viable shell that like launches apps, um, has a lock screen, makes phone calls, um, but doesn't really do any of the fancy stuff that people now expect from phones, like uh, super rich notifications and like all, all of the sharing features, that's probably not going to be there at launch. Um, but the thing is, sort of, we're, we're working towards that. Um, we have a plan and sort of from a design perspective, we have a pretty clear idea where we want to go. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be like a step-by-step a -step process. So probably the shell that you're going to see on the phone when it launches is going to be something like this. Um, you're going to have a lock screen, you're going to have like open apps with this bar on the bottom to basically like get you home to the, to the like grid of applications, and then like a simple grid of apps. Um, and you know, things might change, but this is kind of the direction that we're moving in at the moment. And then going further, there's like a whole bunch of other stuff that obviously we'll want and we are, we're going to implement sooner or later. Uh, when exactly that's going to happen and sort of like also the integration with upstream is kind of TBD. But yeah, eventually we'll want like super cool sliding multitasking and like rich notifications and search and, and quick settings and all those things. But 
sort of that's that's um, that's going to evolve as um, like basically probably after the phone launch. Uh, so that's a, like kind of a basic overview of our plans for the shell. But the really interesting stuff for you guys right now is on the app side, because that is going to impact upstream GNOME like soon. Um, so I think like one of the interesting things that um, sort of uh, I found like in really investigating this issue over the past few months is that um, we didn't just start working on GNOME for phones now. Like GNOME has been laying the groundwork for this for a very long time, making like so many amazing decisions that like sort of have not only helped us on the desktop uh, like get rid of all the old craft but like sort of have have enabled this this uh, platform to scale to new farm factors kind of already in a lot of ways like um, this on the right side you got Wonderlist on iOS and this is you know to do 328 like no patches or anything um, if you imagine this just like being a little bit narrower <laughs> You know, the, the difference is, is really not that big. I mean, this is just like one example, but um, sort of in terms of the patterns, like um, sort of having you localized kind of menus instead of one huge menu area somewhere on, on, on the top, um, having big like click areas, which obviously is great on all platforms, but especially important on, on touch um, platforms. So I think all of that work is, is, is really helping us there. And a lot of the design patterns will not really need to change that much. Um, so for some apps like um, GNOME Web, really the main things you need to do, like you don't need any fancy new like GTK feature or anything, you just like move a few buttons to an action bar, which is a pattern we already have. And then like obviously we can't do a tab like widget. So basically there's like a tab button there that like opens a list of tabs. And that's basically it. And that's kind of something that we for the most part already have implemented um, and that, that Adrian's been working on. Um, now, not all the apps are going to be so simple, and there's a number of patterns that sort of require some consideration. And sort of these are the main ones that I want to talk about. There's more, but I think like this kind of gives you an idea of, of how, like where we're going and, and how we how we think about this. Um, and I'm just going to go through these and and sort of uh, like yeah, b basically explain those along uh, on some with some examples. So the first one is sidebars, or as we call them, um, like split header bars which are apps that kind of like have this global area on the left uh, with a bunch of things, and then there's a detailed version on the right. Obviously, that's not something you can really do if you have a really narrow screen, so we're gonna have to split that up, and that's what all the mobile platforms do, right? They just like have the detail thing in a separate screen with a back button. So, concrete example, right? The, the new uh, settings shell with the sidebar is exactly this, with all the settings panels here, and then one specific panel over there. Um, I mean, you know, it doesn't take much imagination to just <laughs> keep keep the sidebar like in, on the main screen, and then have a back button on the actual panel um, on on a separate screen. And sort of, I mean, conceptually, it's super simple. On the in the implementation, there are a couple of sort of things to be figured out, but there's already like um, a widget that uh, Adrian has been working on, which I can show you. And, but I think he's already shown it in the demo, so kind of it's it's not, probably not that exciting at this point. But basically, this is what happens. Um, you have your sidebar when it's wider than X pixels, and then if it's not, you have the back button. So, <laughs> yay! Uh, I mean, this widget is like not 100% stable yet, but like probably in a few months we're gonna be able to use it everywhere. And it's kind of, I mean, it doesn't really like require any major changes to design or anything. It's just like something that's gonna be nice for everything because you, now you can make apps smaller. That's great. Um, so the next one, really near and dear to my heart because I've encountered it in every single app I've worked on for the past year, which was like somewhere around 10 apps and each of them has like one, this one list screen where I'm like, well, if it's like narrow, I would like it to be, I don't know, 90% of the width. But if it's like really wide, I would like there to be a maximum width. And in between, there's a lot of, all sorts of weird width problems. So like basically, right now, most apps do either like scales forever, kind of like with a percentage thing, or it's a fixed width, which means like if it's a fixed width, it probably works if you never make it smaller than like 600 pixels. But it also means you can never get to phone sizes. So this is something that I'm um, very excited to say is gonna go away very soon. 
um, because Adrian made a super cool uh, widget called HTY column, which does exactly this. Um, so if we go to our column thing here, basically there's a maximum width that you set here. Um, and then, like, if it's very narrow, see? Okay, well, the sidebar is kind of getting in the way here. But, like, if it's very narrow, there's, like, only the padding. And as it gets wider, it actually follows, like, a sane function for keeping, like, a nice width at any width. And then if it gets to 600, or like we can maybe change this a bit so you can see it better. See? So like it never goes beyond that maximum width, so you always ensure like legible like line lengths, which is important um, for reading and stuff. So yeah, wait, oh, sorry, get out of myself there. So this same as with the other widget, like it exists, uh, it works like for the most part, there's a few bugs with it. A few months, everyone will be able to use it. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, another one that's kind of related, but also kind of not, is the app menu migration. So it's something that we've been talking about for a long time, like independently of the mobile stuff. But obviously, since it's kind of a major change in the platform, um, it impacts the mobile stuff as well, because it means that the mobile shell doesn't have to have an app menu, which would have been awkward, like having some tiny thing up there that's like really tiny touch target. So it's kind of a lucky coincidence, I guess. Um, so for those like who haven't followed the recent discussion, like basically the app menu is um, since the 3.0 um, release, there was this menu in the like top left corner with like the app icon and name, and there's like a few global um, menu items in there, like uh, the, the, the keyboard shortcuts, about, quit, and all that stuff. Um, and then the idea was to also put other global things in there, like the preferences and like new window and stuff like that. But in practice, it's like been adopted in, well, not very consistently among our own apps, and like there's some other problems there. Like obviously, uh, discoverability being the main one, like it's totally disconnected from the window, and um, new users wouldn't find it, and then if you have multi-monitor, it's totally fucked, because then like <laughs> you have the monitor over there, and then like the, the menu for the global stuff is all the way on your other monitor, and there's like so many really awkward uh, cases there. Um, and obviously, a lot of the apps that people use a lot of the time, like Firefox and stuff, like third-party apps, they don't use it at all. So that also doesn't really help there. And sort of the, the idea is to move all that stuff into the app window, um, which is what a lot of apps already do, right? Like that's what Firefox does with their menu in the, in the right. Um, and basically like get rid of this idea of like global versus um, sort of app level kind of menu items because it's always been kind of murky anyway. Um, and then sort of on the main view of an app, you just have this hamburger menu um, that we already have in a lot of apps anyway, so it's really gonna be a very small change in terms of the design. And then if you have a secondary view, right, like if you click something and then there's like a back button, um, that there are some cases there where we currently use the hamburger as like a generic catch-all menu there, so we kinda need to get rid of that. So for that, we go with a different icon um, that does the same thing as currently those menus do, um, but basically like to distinguish it from, uh, from the top level hamburger menu. So there will only be one hamburger menu in every app, um, and it's sort of the one that has all the global stuff in it, like the about and, and kind of help and that stuff. And then like obviously there's the split header bar case where um, you're gonna have both at the same time because your global area is kind of on the left, so that's where you put the hamburger. And then sort of the settings panel, if like the Wi-Fi settings have like a, a bunch of random things up there, that's where you put those. Um, like this is currently sort of in a proposal stage. It's not 100% decided. Um, though like everyone I talked to was kind of really in favor and I've not heard any major complaints. So I think it's probably gonna happen more or less like this. Um, and also like since sort of we, I needed something to move forward with on the phone side, like. That's what I've been doing in all my mockups, and that's what I kind of assume we're moving towards. But it's kind of, sort of, still, um, it's, it's still a, a work in progress from that point of view. And the last thing I want to talk about is um, dialogues. This one's very kind of like shaky in, in, in terms of um, like how far we are, but it's, it's a problem that we'll need to think about. Um, basically, the, the problem is if you have a main window, and then like a large modal window or some kind of dialogue where you do a secondary thing, um, 
that's not going to work if you have a tiny screen where that model window would fill up the entire window. So probably what you want to do is something like in the stack, in the main window. And obviously we want a consistent solution to that. In addition to that, a lot of those are kind of like old timey and like not really uh, up to date with, with the sort of current uh, design trends that, that are happening in all of our other screens. I mean, part of it is that, you know, a lot of them are like preference screens that are not that important anyway, but like we should probably sort of do something there. And what I'd be interested in is some kind of like consistent preferences pattern, kind of like we have for the, uh, for the keyboard shortcuts that like apps can just use and you don't need to like do a custom thing. There's just like a preferences, um, uh, system preferences uh, window widget or whatever. Um, and so, because also these are not very mobile friendly in the first place. Um, so that's another area that I'm exploring, but I'm not very far along. I just sort of wanted to um, talk about it since probably th that's what a lot of you are thinking about. Like, what about those really wide dialogues? Um, so yes, it's something we're thinking about and it's something that probably is a good candidate for another one of Adrian's really cool lip handy widgets. He's in the back very excited about more work. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> no, I mean seriously, Adrian has to be doing amazing work, and I'm so excited about all of these things. And like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> and so basically, probably the direction we'd be moving in is something like this, where like on the desktop you keep it a model window, and then if the window is small enough, and or you're on the phone, like it becomes a full screen. It's, I mean, basically the same thing that Android and iOS do for a lot of their kind of dialogues. I mean, maybe in some cases we need a back button, in other cases you just do apply cancel, but it's really not that big a change. It, the, the important thing is to kind of like do it in a way where every app author doesn't have to kind of implement all of this stuff themselves. Um, and so like that, that's where Lib Handy comes in and we really hope that once the design for those things is kind of settled and once they're stable, we can also get them upstream into GTK or wherever else it makes sense in the platform so that all of our apps can use them easily. And it's, it's not kind of like up to the individual app developer to make all these things happen because um, we know they have enough on, our, on their plates. Um, so like those are kind of the main patterns that I think have to be figured out if we want most GNOME apps to work uh, on phones. There are obviously like a lot of other small things like um, the keyboard sort of like needs to come in and like the app needs to resize and things like copy and paste and sharing and like all, all sorts of things that people expect from phones nowadays that we'll want, we'll want eventually and that on some level we'll need, to, um, we'll need to address probably in the GNOME platform um, at, 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 a, yeah, uh, at a platform level because they affect everything. Um, but I think sort of like, I hope at least, this kind of gives a glimpse at a, a direction that we can move in that not only sort of um, makes the apps work on phones, but also actually like helps the apps work better on the desktop, right? Like uh, we have a lot of problems with like, if you have a relatively small laptop screen, like apps not tiling because there's just like those 100 pixels or whatever missing and you can't resize them. And like this would help with a lot of that stuff. Um, and also, I think like large displays are another case where like a lot of our apps kind of really fail on large displays because all of these kind of adaptive patterns aren't there. And so people kind of like just like optimize for the whatever 800 times 600 pixel window size. And if you go anywhere like below or above that, it kind of breaks. And so I'm really excited about like going in at a platform level and fixing those things. And I think that's also, like, it's not just like something that helps with phones, but it's something that's gonna be great for like gigantic multi-monitor display setups as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that said, I want to like show you a few case studies of like apps that I've been making mockups for and where I kind of like developed some of these, these patterns like um, looking at what real apps need. Um, the first one obviously being calls that, that I think you already saw in, uh, in Bob's talk. Um, like really nothing fancy here, right? Um, for the most part, it's just like lists of contacts, um, and those would probably, uh, on the desktop at least, uh, 
you you really want them to like be centered and have a have a nice column width. So that's where the column widget comes in. Um, everything else just really standard GTK widgets. Um, there's messages, uh, which I mean, you definitely want the column widget on this stuff because that's actually something that most messaging apps are really bad at. Funnily, uh, like keeping a, keeping a nice column width. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously we would have the we would have the leaflet widget here for um, for really narrow sizes. Um, and actually, the, the funny thing there is that the Telegram desktop app already does most of these patterns um, pretty nicely. And I think that's a great example of like how a desktop app can sort of work perfectly at these uh, at these form factors, at these like phone sized window sizes, um, and just like naturally work on on all of these uh, work in all of these cases. So that's definitely like been been a cool inspiration. Um, and then finally, um, this is an app that I'm very excited about, uh, which is podcasts that Jordan has been working on for like, well, I don't know, the past year or so. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Right. Um, and so like th this has, for, for a lot of these things, this has been kind of like a test case for me, like what would a kind of modern content app uh, sort of like we, we have on mobile would uh, look like. And again, as with all these things, there's really not that many things you need to do for it to just like work on both desktop and mobile. And that really makes me excited for the future of our platform. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, what I wanted to show you. Um, if you're interested in any or all of these things, uh, you can totally get involved. The libhandy uh, repo is here. It's like the, the Purism GitLab instance. But I think there's also a mirror on GNOME GitLab. I'm not sure. But so it's there. Uh, Adrian is like, probably going to get these things into a production ready state soonish. And if and when that happens, you'll hear about it. Um, and yeah, I mean, let's make GNOME awesome. If there's any questions, let me know. Just per se, that's amazing. Really fucking amazing. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So that's what's to the, at the beach. Yeah, if you remember. So what was your biggest struggle on doing this? Sorry? What was your biggest struggle in doing this? The biggest problem that you think you had in trying to achieve this? I mean, like time, I guess. It, it would be nice to have more people, like especially I don't know on on the on the GNOME design side, it would be really nice to have more people. Yeah, we all the projects need them, that designers, yeah. I think. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, like yeah, so, sort of. I, I, what I tried to show you here that this is not magical stuff. We're not like going in any in a crazy direction or like doing something that's different from the core GNOME platform. This is just like a few nudges here and there. And it like works surprisingly well, uh, and that's just like super exciting. Personally, you think if we had more developers on that, we could adapt the main apps and the mainstream apps from GNOME in a year, two years, something like that. What do you think? I, I'm not sure if we even need more developers for that. Like, it just depends on the interest of the current developers. You know, the current developers of GNOME, uh, I mean. From what I, I'm, let's preface here, I'm the designer. This is not a question for me. Um, but it, yeah. Uh, from the interest that I've seen in the community and, and the kind of like uh, momentum, it seems reasonable that most of the apps that would be useful on the phone will be like available relatively soon if the widgets like are stable and, and sort of uh, easily usable. But yeah, that, that should happen relatively soon. Hey, um, uh, I have actually a series of comments about <laughs> everything that you said. Go ahead. So um, about libhandy, um, apparently if people start using a lot, it should not be a library, it should be in GTK itself. Agreed. Um, 
I mean, if it's three or more apps use, it's should be in GTK actually. So. Right. I mean, like at the moment, the the thing is with Leap Handy is it's for experimenting with these patterns yeah, also, of like, and sort of figuring out the way we want to do it. And I absolutely agree that as soon as possible and as soon as like we we can make it all happen, uh, it should be upstream GTK. And you mentioned that. Um, I, I don't know if that's really a long-term plan, but plan. But um, you said something about using GNOME shell itself instead of a custom shell in, in, in Purism. Uh, so well, I mean, I can't really speak to the technical side of this because I can. It's not possible. <laughs> no, no. R r r <laughs> so like, what the the thing that um, the thing that was discussed is like potentially sort of having this shell be a prototype for the future GNOME shell that we want to have everywhere, um, both from a design and maybe like from an architectural point of view. And then, I mean, who knows if based on this code base or a totally new code base, eventually we should have a single code base that runs on both the phone and the desktop. Whether that's based on like the current architecture or this architecture or some magical other thing, it's not really my department, but like from a design point of view, we definitely want to like convert those things as much as possible. Yeah, one possibility is to you know upstream as much as possible to GNOME Shell, and make it as easy as possible for you to fork it on your your GNOME on your your shell. That's what we at Endless do. Um, so at least we try to mm. upstream as much as we can, and maintain the, a very minimal set of of yeah. changes on top of. <laughs> idea. Well, I, I, again, like, like I think there's a number of reasons why this path was chosen. One being performance, uh, the other one being just like adapting the UI for all of the things we currently have in GNOME Shell is a huge task. Um, and like at the very beginning, we don't need all of those things. So probably we'd want to maybe like disable or like strip out some in the beginning to just like get the basics working. And from what I understood, like the, one of the problems was that that would be more work than just doing it from scratch and also getting better performance uh, or something like but again very bad question for me because I don't know yeah um, not questions actually just sure com yeah right comments. Yeah, yeah. when do you plan to actually get into gnome to doing gnome calendar 2 <laughs> with the new mockups soon okay okay I promise I'm counting on that Hey, I wonder whether it makes uh, a difference to design something for the mobile platform because you have different ways. You, not only do you have different like sizes in terms of screen estate, but you also have different ways of interacting with the user. Like you know, you don't prop like m most. Obviously, you don't have like a mouse or a pointing device or a keyboard. You have soft keyboards and touch gestures and all. And I wonder whether you've you've had any thoughts on redesigning applications such that you know you could make better use of all these new ways of interacting with the user and how that would fit into you know the general gnome mm -hmm. vision of providing a desktop at right. the end of the day i mean on one hand it's true that you have all these different capabilities but on the other hand if you look at what most platforms are doing in practice it does seem to converge on a few like interaction models that are relatively close to like the click and do stuff uh, metaphor that we have on the desktop. Obviously, like gestures is something that we want, um, and it's something that we will do once the technology like allows it to do, which allows us to do it. Which I, I think in some cases should be very soon. In other cases, should be further away. Um, but I think like that's maybe sort of a second step for all of this. Right. Sure. Um, so I, I mean, like I, we were also very interested in, for example, like ergonomics, sort of like maybe moving some of the more important controls to the bottom and stuff like that. Um, but on one hand, like it doesn't really seem to hurt Android at the moment and iOS because they have a lot of their really important stuff at the top. So it's probably fine if, like, for the beginning, we just sort of like keep things really simple. Longer term, I'm very, very interested in all those things. That's basically the the short answer is yes, but not yet. Yeah, I just keep wondering whether it makes sense to, you know, reuse all the existing GNOME applications for the very mobile experience. 
You oh, well, just I'm have a very different interaction, right? You usually only have one hand, and you can only reach like one quarter of the you know screen, and so maybe yeah, well, yes and no, because like in practice, that that's what all the other GNOME plat uh, what all the, all the other mobile platforms kind of already do. Like in terms of UI, there's really not that much difference. Like that that to do list example is one of many where like most apps are just kind of lists, and that's that. For the most part, that works in in a lot of scenarios. Um, I, sure, there's definitely a lot of apps that wouldn't make sense on the desktop, uh, like I don't know, Compass or whatever, uh, or the other way around. Right. Probably files is not a huge priority in in the short term for us, but maybe at some point. Um, but yeah, yeah, basically yes in the future. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just kind of want to, re to respond to the... I can't really uh, hear you. Can you hear me? It's louder. Uh, I just wanted to respond to the uh, question about uh, GNOME Shell and why why we didn't use GNOME Shell. Like, G Guido wrote Fosh, but he's I don't think he's in the room. Uh, and so, like, do we were evaluating a lot of uh, Wayland compositors, and I remember we had a meeting, and I said in the meeting, the last thing we want to do is write our own compositor. But everything we looked at basically didn't really fit what we needed. And if the main, I mean, the, it was like, do do we use GNOME Shell? Do we not use GNOME Shell? Do we use Western? Do we not use Western? And the GNOME Shell developers themselves told us, don't use GNOME Shell. So yeah, so that's that's one of the big reasons why we didn't use it. Thank you. Can you go back? Can you go back to the slide? Sorry. Can you go back to the app menu slide? Sure. Which one? The uh, first, last, the, the one? one, this one. This one. This one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a picky question, mm -hmm. but uh, about when we, when we first introduced app menus. Uh, we had uh, every app, uh, I mean, of course, every app has some menu items that are different, but every app also has some that are the same. Help about quit at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And right now, that's all nice and standard. Help about quit. The separator yeah. is above help. If keyboard shortcuts is there, it goes, I think it's above yeah. help. Uh, I don't remember exactly where we put keyboard shortcuts. I mean, I think this but is it, the it, current it order, but in addition, there's quit below it. Yes, yes, yes. Was quit now gone? Uh, because it's quit is gone. Yes. Because it's not in the global top bar anymore. Um, right. So it took us a while to, to 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 standardize on that, though. Yes. Um, now I see. This is going to sound picky, but I see the separator is now above preferences. Is that where you want it, uh, or do you want it? Because right now, where it would be mm -hmm. in the current design is above keyboard shortcuts. Uh, Do we want to move preferences into the section at the bottom below that separator? Or is uh, that just an afterthought in the design? Mm -hmm. So that's something we've been kind of considering because like a lot of apps do do that, where it's like this block of global stuff at the bottom and then preferences and then all the other stuff. So we've been considering if maybe it might make sense to move that down to the other. But that's not at all decided. This is just like a mock-up trying to show you where like the general idea like this is the global kind of app menu stuff and this is sort of the view stuff don't take any of the details like with with too much uh, uh, yeah don't read too much into like some of the details okay but for the final design have the details sorry for the final design well yeah of course I mean this is an ongoing please, thing please as I said have a yes please absolutely please consider that uh-huh agreed uh, totally. I guess that's all for now since we've kind of ran out of time. So can we thank Tobias one more time, please? <laughs> <laughs>